Hello and good day to all. Our paper is entitled BERT-Based Neural Collaborative Filtering and Fixed Length Contiguous Tokens Explanation. My name is Reynald Adrian Pugoy from the National Changkong University in Tainan City in Taiwan. Let's get started by having this short introduction. Reviews have been utilized to model review features for recommendation and rating prediction. Before, a long time ago, people oftentimes used ratings. However, using ratings alone is a clear case of oversimplification. Reviews contain a large amount of rich and valuable information as they can cover the multifaceted substance of user opinions. That's why we are now using reviews nowadays. And this gave birth to review-based recommender systems or models. Such approaches learn representations using traditional or mainstream word embeddings. And a specific review is then transformed to an embedded matrix before being fed to a CNN. This time, what are the current issues or drawbacks experienced by most recommender approaches? First is the utilization of mainstream word embeddings to model review features. We can argue or we can say that their static nature is a hindrance because each word sense is associated with the same embedding regardless of the context. And according to a prior study, this can be an issue for review-based recommenders as it can affect modeling users and items and consequently the recommendation performance or quality. Another important point here is feeding the matrix of word embeddings to a CNN also loses the so-called word frequency information, which is said to be crucial for modeling reviews. The second drawback is the inherent black box nature of neural networks, which makes the explanations behind every prediction obscure. The complex neural network architecture actually opaques the model's internal decision-making processes, but providing explanations could help persuade users to make decisions and develop further trust in a recommender system. This time, I'm going to discuss the details behind our model, which we call Benefit. Our model learns user and item representations using two parallel networks. It should be noted first that the inputs are user item pairs. The user network takes all the reviews given by user U, and the item network takes all the reviews received by item I. To address the first drawback, we incorporate BERT as a key component in each parallel network. What is so good about BERT? BERT affords us to extract more meaningful or contextualized features adaptable to any contexts and BERT can also retain the word frequency information. So BERT produces the CLS contextualized representations for each review. Having said that, we can then obtain the user embedding or the item embedding as simply as the average of the reviews CLS representations for that particular user or item. By this time, we're, we are supposed to have the user embedding and the item embedding. After which, 
user and item embeddings are concatenated together in a shared hidden space. Within feed, the concatenated embedding to a multi-layer perceptron to learn possible user item interactions. The number of hidden layers in an MLP can be our hyperparameter. Then we feed the output of the MLP to one more dense layer to finally return the rating prediction. Please take note that the whole model is trained with a loss function based on MSA or mean squared error. Now, to address the second drawback, we integrate BERT's self-attention mechanism and an implementation of the maximum subarray problem. We actually argue that these self-attention weights can be the basis for rating prediction explanations. Keep in mind that the stack of BERT's transformer encoders also provides us sets of self-attention weights that a token gives to every token found in the review text. We are interested in the attention that the CLS token gives to each review token using a specific encoder layer's multiple attention heads. We are just using, again, one encoder layer, which is the 12th layer. And that layer has 12 self-attention heads, which implies that there are 12 different attention weights that a review token has received from the CLS token. We then compress these attention weights into a single value by obtaining their sum. Finally, we perform an implementation of the fixed length maximum subarray problem to generate the explanation per each review. Just, just to give you a simple illustration here, we have this particular example, and the parameter here is a fixed length n, and the goal is to find that particular contiguous subarray or segment of length n that has the largest possible sum of compressed attention weights. Going back to our example, each review token has their corresponding compressed attention weights received from the CLS token. So the possible explanation for this particular example, the original review is, I like this movie so much that I forgot to sleep. And the largest possible sum with length n, which is 5 in this particular example, is like this movie so much, having gained that sum of 2.6, which is, again, the largest over each and every possible segments in our review. We then proceed answering these research questions. The first question is, does benefit our model outperform other state-of-the-art recommender models? The second question is, what is the optimal configuration for learning user item interactions? And the third is, can our model produce explanations acceptable to humans? For our data sets, we chose four from various domains, and three data sets here are said to be five core, which means that users and items have at least five reviews. And we use an 80-10-10 training test validation split. For our baselines, we chose two recommender approaches or methods. We have DeepCon, a 2017 recommender model considered to be a pioneer in review-based collaborative filtering, and Nare, a 2018 model. Both of these are 
said to be state-of-the-art in recommender systems research and to compare the baselines and our model's performances, we use the root mean squared error, or RMSA. For the first research question, we can see here that the results show that our model consistently outperforms the baselines across all data sets. On average, the result of the improvement gained by Benefic is nearly 7%. Thus, we can say that using BERT-derived embeddings, considered to be more semantically meaningful than their traditional counterparts, can indeed significantly improve rating prediction accuracy. To answer the second research question, we did a grid search on the following parameters or setup. We want to compare concatenated embeddings against the element-wise product of user and item embeddings using a different number of MLP layers. For the results, using this graph as our basis, Benefix utilization of concatenation exceeds the element-wise product by a significant margin across all MLP layers and datasets. This result verifies or validates the positive effect of feeding the concatenated features to a multi-layer perceptron to learn user item interactions. We can also say that Increasing the hidden layers implies decreasing and better RMSA values, and stacking more layers is indeed beneficial and effective for review-based neural explicit collaborative filtering. Now, to answer the third research question, to validate the helpfulness of our models produce explanations in real life, we also generate possible explanations from TF-IDF and TextRank. Then we ask two human judges to evaluate the explanations based on usefulness statements on a five-point Likert scale. These are the usefulness statements, or US. US1 is stated as the explanation captures the essence of the customer's preference in the review. And the second U.S. is the explanation is helpful for you or any future customer to decide to purchase that particular item. For the results of the first usefulness statement, the judges find that nearly 58% of our models explanations capture the essence of the customer's preference. So this 58% we got from those judges which gave usefulness scores of either 4, four or 5. It is then followed by tax rank with almost 52% of its produced explanations. And lastly, we have TF-IDF with only 1.67%. Our model has a mean usefulness score of 3.45, which is obviously better than tax rank with 3.26 and TF IDEA, which has 2.05. For the second set of results, the judges express that nearly 63% of the explanations generated by benefit and tax rank are helpful for any future customers. Quite interesting, however, upon including the low scoring explanations, benefit is still better than tax rank. The former has a mean usefulness score of 3.61 against tax ranks 3.40. Also, the judges observed that only 8.33% of the 
of the explanations from TF-IDF are helpful with a mean usefulness score of 2.18. We have successfully implemented a novel recommender model which uniquely integrates BERT, multi-layer perceptron, and maximum sub-array problem. Benefix predictive capability is validated by experiments performed on Amazon and Yelp datasets consistently outperforming other state-of-the-art recommender models. Furthermore, its explanation generation capability is verified by human judges. Hence, in the future, we will consider incorporating other neural components like attention mechanisms and enhance the expressiveness and the overall quality of the generated explanations. And with that, thank you for your listening.